Professor, a very good afternoon to you and thank you so much for your time. We were referencing there in that report by our colleague Sukhwa Jomwaki just the level of stigma that many people are still battling with. Why is that still the case when every year we're trying to open up conversations about mental health further? Yeah, good afternoon. Thanks for the opportunity. Um, I think stigma remains a, a major issue uh, for mental health and I think we're just beginning to understand the extent of it. Um, people often mistake uh, have mistaken views about mental health, about the causes of mental illness, and often the blame gets put on the person who happens to be suffering from a particular mental health condition, whether it's depression, anxiety, schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, or, or substance use problems. And uh, I think the key is, first of all, public education. We need to understand more and have more information available about the causes and the possible treatments for these conditions. Um, but also it's very important that people who live with mental health conditions, who have lived experience, share their stories. Uh, the best evidence for reducing stigma against mental illness is personal contact with someone who suffered with a mental health condition. And that's where I think a lot of the research is going now is, you know, how can we make contact and introduce people with lived experience um, into the general public discourse about mental health. Prof, we speak often in South Africa in particular about just the tough economic times of seeing the recent brutal cases of gender-based violence coupled to some of the other challenges that we face in everyday life. I am wondering then if the triggers for mental health in this time that we're living in have evolved in any way from the historic causes. Yeah, so I think you, you touched on some crucial things, you know. There's a growing evidence for how our social and economic environment really determines our mental health, uh, both at an individual and a population level. So things like poverty, uh, inequality, violence, particularly gender-based violence, are all major risk factors for mental health problems. They increase the likelihood that people who are victims or are exposed to these things uh, become more depressed, more anxious, may resort to substances to try and medicate themselves. Um, so these social e economic conditions that we're facing, especially the high levels of violence in our society, are big drivers of, of mental health problems. And, and really there's a cycle. So we need to work out ways of, of breaking that cycle from one generation to the next. And has treatment been able to keep up then with the times? And what is available out there for the ordinary South African? Well, I think we need to really address this from a, a range of different angles. You know, the one option is certainly treatment. And we need to improve access to care, improve access to psychological therapies, um, to pharmacological therapies where those are necessary. Um, but also, I think there's a huge amount that we can be doing to address the social causes of mental health problems uh, by uh, addressing poverty, by reducing violence in our communities, by ensuring that perpetrators are removed um, and that protection orders, for example, are followed through and maintained. Um, the more that we can do to reduce uh, violence, uh, to reduce inequalities in our society, the overall the better will be our overall mental health and well-being as a society. Professor Quick Lund speaking to us from Cape Town. He is a professor at UCT's Centre for Public Mental Health.